<laughs> Welcome back, everyone. My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. And we are Poll on the, Poll on the Call podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Today, we are so excited to be here interviewing our next Poll studio and getting a tour of Real, Real Poll Dance Studio. studio yeah. <laughs> we got to work on that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> In Billings, Montana, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Ah, excellent. We're here with owner Cody and Christy. Excited <laughs> <laughs> to be here. Yes. Thank you so much for taking time out and and being here to show us around your studio and talking a little bit about more about being a studio owner, your team, philosophies life outside of pole if there is etc <laughs> <Yes, there is. laughs> well, yeah, there's a there's a lot but no we're t- we're closed today so it is a very convenient day for an interview since we don't have a lot of traffic going in and out <laughs> oh nice do you have um set days off or your your um how, what are your classes like <laughs> yeah, so so i'm only open four days a week right now because currently I work another job to help kind of support this place because we're new. We just opened in October. And so, yeah, I work on the weekends. I work as an exotic dancer. So I work Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. And those are the days the studio are closed. And then Christy works her other job. Um, She's a hairstylist during the day and then comes in and teaches classes about here and there. Yeah. I'm like this. I'm like the sub, like the student and and the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> She's my backup because unfortunately I'm a one woman army, mm-hmm. and Christy's certified. She knows all my lesson plans, so that's about how we do it. Is we're only I do open poll all day long, and then I throw in at least two classes are open a day currently. And then when I'm gone, Christy's here, so. (laughs) Yeah, I love your conditioning classes. Those are probably my favorite. I like look forward to pole conditioning more than any other conditioning. That's a surprise. Um, Hey, Tim. Oh, you're a sweet. We're trying to get a laptop charger. I think we'll be okay, though. (laughs) This is Tiffany. This is the gal that helped me get all of this started, actually. Oh, awesome. Nice to meet you. My mentor and savior, I actually rent from her, and uh, she was rescuing me because I couldn't find my computer charger today. (laughs) That's okay. Thank you so much, Tiff. (laughs) Yes, I'll see you later. I totally forgot. I told her to just come on in. (laughs) (laughs) No worries. Yeah, that would be my mentor. She owns multiple businesses, including uh, the wonderful space we rent from, so... Bless Tiffany. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So was yeah. it easy to, to find the space because she was there for it, you? Or It took me a long time, actually. I'd been looking and looking. We both worked at a different studio in town, and they let us sneak in poll when we could. But it just, it wasn't working. And so it doesn't share a space well. Yeah, pole. Pole. Like, it's nice to have a just pole Just a pole space. Yeah. You were looking for like a year for yeah. like the right building. And then um, this building itself is owned by the gal uh, who owns the gym I go to. And she's actually the one who introduced me to Tiffany and was like, hey, Tiff has uh, fitness spaces that she leases out. And so that's how I met Tiffany was through the gal that owns the gym I go to. And that's how I found my space. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. So it was yeah. like meant to be, it just happened. <laughs> yeah, just, totally. It fell right into, when you found the space, I feel like everything started falling into place. It was, it was so helpful. And then, yeah, like Tiffany has been super helpful because this is my first like legal business I've ever owned. <laughs> I do like hobbies on this side, but yeah, I've never ran like a full business. So Tiffany has been amazing through every step. If I ever have questions or something, I can literally ask Tiffany anything. She's been there. She's done that. She knows. <laughs> That's perfect. It's so important to have someone like that for sure. But I think Definitely. a lot of us, we're, we're like, oh, I know how to dance and I love this thing and I want to open the studio, but I don't know anything about business at all. <laughs> That's, yeah. 
my college experience didn't prep me for running a business. I went to college for athletic training and I worked as a trainer and an athletic trainer, but I've always worked for somebody else. So I had no idea about the business side. Mm -hmm. did, you it's a find at least, did you find the, at least the athletic training help in the pole dancing side besides the business side? Yes, it does actually. Um, I'm a very picky trainer. I prefer working strength in form over anything. And I, I think that does come from my athletic training background is I don't want injuries. I want that prevented at 100% rate. And so I treat my dancers just like I do my athletes. So we go through extensive warm-up routines, stretching. I try to sneak in as much education as possible. So explaining what muscles are working in each pose and things like that. So I definitely mix it. You do break down anatomy. I feel like more than any other studio I've been to, like I'll, I'll hear something in class and I'll go to another workout class. Like, let's say we're doing oblique crunches and I'll be like, all right, tuck that core. Like, just because you'll be like, don't arch. This is why. So yeah. yeah. So I think it comes in handy a lot, especially because that's, I think, missing a lot for a lot of dancers is they don't know their anatomy or their structure or what's going on in their body. We talk all the time about people who just like kick up into their, you know, outside leg hangs or whatever. And that Blasphemy. looks great for one move. But if you don't have that core strength, you've got limited amount of time that you're going to be upside down doing cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And rates of injury with lack of control. Yeah. I think it blends perfectly. I love that. That's awesome. That's cool that you found a way to connect that and help the students. Yeah. And then I'm a big supporter of using fitness as a tool to help excel. Like a lot of my athletes, my swimmers do weightlifting. I like my dancers to do weightlifting. I like supplementary fitness. So I try to sneak that in as I educate my dancers too, is so that when they roll up in the gym or if there's something, there's a pose they want to, but they don't have the strength for it yet or whatever, they have the tools to be able to build that to help work towards those goals. Cause I don't think just being on the pole, like a lot of my dancers are multi-sport people. So I like to encourage that and give them the tools in everything I can, not just in the studio, but also in the gym. That's awesome. So you do way more than just the exotic dancing on the weekend and pole dancing. You're working <laughs> with athletes and all that. I think all dancers are athletes. I don't think we're given enough credit <laughs> to how powerful and how amazing our bodies are and to get on a pole first off and twist yourself around it that's every muscle in your body firing and i don't think people realize how hard pole is exactly. <laughs> right awesome. sometimes you have to rearrange your insides literally <laughs> <laughs> that's your place my ribs there. over here <laughs> you move this entire organ <laughs> right like just move it over a little bit Please tighter, use your organs to hold on. <laughs> She's definitely the relatable one. I got to remember to bring myself down a notch and quit nerding out. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh, I, love it. I appreciate that though. Like sometimes the, like the overload of information is good because then the student can either like choose, you know, when they want to zone in and out. <laughs> but occasionally yeah, they'll learn something like, and it's good that, you know, all of the good information is being spread. <laughs> My goal in the students. long run is to create independent athletes. So I try to sneak all that information in and I see it every day in my conditioning classes. The girls know their warm up routines. They know how to adjust it to their bodies, how to change reps, how to. And that's what I really want in the long run is people who don't need to zombie listen to me. I want them to learn how to listen to their bodies and work accordingly. And I see it every day, every day they come, every day they, they put something new into the routine. So some of my gals know that during warmups, if 10 reps is not enough for them, they don't even have to ask. They just keep going or they change to an exercise that works for them. And that is what I like to see. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> right. I know for my body, I, I have um, the hypermobility and I need as many instructions as possible so I can like keep my body safe. 
<laughs> yeah. You and me both. I am also hypermobile. Those splits uh, look amazing though. When you're hypermobile, <laughs> those splits, like, that's so pretty. Right, it does look really good, but then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, got to keep those joints safe and yeah. those tendons. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm getting with my shoulders. I have been very unsafe many times and have yeah. wrist it's the consequences Your of my mobility. Is, but you've nursed it back to health for as many times as I've <laughs> seen you dislocate your shoulder in the last like two years. You nurse it back to health every time. <laughs> and it sounds horrible, but she really like two or three, is it three times? At least it's two. Been two. It's okay. been two. But you yeah. always are like nursing it and then you're always working to be like, all right, I got to train this side instead. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That's a, I'm guilty of slacking and then having to get back on the grind again because I am definitely prone to dislocation, right. especially my shoulders. That hypermobility, getting a little too loose in there. Right. And it's so I feel that too. When you like love something so much and you're like, oh, I'm injured. It's like, oh, what? Well, what can I do? <laughs> like, how much can yeah. I be on this thing without moving this body part? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm guilty of that being being a little too much, overworking. I'll admit I really can't feel my arms much today. <laughs> oh my God. And I have to go to work tonight, which means I'll be pole dancing for eight hours tonight. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was just about to ask you, how many hours a week do you think that you are active and pole dancing um, and teaching? Oh, so the nice thing about open pole is I don't often teach during open pole. So that's like normal gym hours where people come in and out and do their own thing. Um, and I'm just here just to be here. Um, so I only teach, well, then I teach privates throughout the day. So I'd say I teach every day about four hours, five hours on a normal day. Uh, where I'm teaching, but I don't have to get on the pole too much during that time. Um, and then on the weekends, I pull down so my shifts are eight hours. So I'm on and off the pole, like at least once an hour. Uh, so that's about three days a week. I can't do the math. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. So that's the pole time. And then I do work out in the gym. Um, at least two hours a day, at least. I try to switch it up and rotate my muscle groups so that I don't beat myself up too much. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a pretty big busy bee, very wiggly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't sit still well. You definitely pull <laughs> more than like I can even imagine. So like, I'm pretty much strictly six hours a week of pull. It's always in the studio. I'm either taking or teaching class. And then outside of here, I teach Legree and I take Legree. So I'll do. Legree three. is hard. Yeah, Legree is hard. Have you guys heard of Legree? What is it's Legree? A, it's a good combo with a uh, pole, but it's all core stuff. So I'm doing that three to four hours a week and then the gym three to four hours a week. So I would say I'm active at least two hours a day, at least six days a week. That is awesome. That keeps off the argument, sure. <laughs> uh, keeps me, keeps me, something's always sore on me I will admit that something is always sore yeah, yeah I feel it I feel that for sure <laughs> but I love the the open poll because I did see that on your schedule on your website because we also have like open poll situations at our studio and I was wondering if you could just describe how you um how you run that and and um if it's like hourly or <laughs> Um, so I have my set hours a day, but it's like a normal gym where you just walk in and like, I don't have a key fob. I'm just here keeping track of that, but you can come in at whatever time during that time. And then you can stay as long as you want. Um, people just pay a monthly reoccurring fee for that and they get to treat it like a normal gym. So as long as it's within those hours, you're free to come in, you can come in for 30 minutes, you can come in ping pong throughout the day um yeah it's pretty open and I just have that because I have some higher level athletes or just people who want to do their own thing can come in and work on whatever they want however they want I feel like it's good too for those people like I'm like this where okay I'm kind of learning a move I kind of know it but I don't 
want to practice it in front of people right now because I look really <laughs> awkward or I want to like scream. And so <laughs> I can come in, do it and work on my own thing. And if there's someone there, they don't really know what we're working on. So it's a nice way when you're kind of in between wanting to be part of the community and wanting to see your full friends. And also sometimes like that self-discovery that happens when you're on the pole, discovering your body, getting through the mental headspace. Like if a move makes me mad, I'll probably practice it on my own and open pole and come back next week and <laughs> see you guys then. Gotcha. Right. Right. I, I do feel like the open pole is, is almost a necessary tool for, for students who are learning, especially because yeah. sometimes the things move too fast in the class and then like, you'll yeah. forget what, what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Or for me, I always hate like them when the teacher is like staring at me. I'm like, no, I need to like go in the corner. <laughs> you gonna find something? <laughs> is that what, like you guys I, like, do yours with you a... We do, but it's only an hour session. But I like how you have the multiple hours where people could just come in at say. any time. Yeah, because that's they, it's less pressure. Like a gym. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Good idea. <laughs> in my gym <laughs> happens downstairs too so if there's no one up here i'll wow. just put a sticker on the door that says call me i'm downstairs if you need me <laughs> the door awesome. lock yeah so i often can get away with going to get my own workouts during the day during that time so i like how relaxed it is that That's yeah awesome. no one's on a timer no one's yeah I like As it we that feel, way. Though, you might hate that. What if we get so popular and you're like, dude, I never get to work out because <laughs> then I'm going to just have to go back to working out before class. I'll just have to get up just a little bit earlier or before I have to come into the studio. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. Like the, everything changes all the time. That's why I always say like in the studio life, like the only thing that stays the same is the changing of everything. <laughs> oh, I like that. Got to be flexible. <laughs> well, I would love to have it someday where I can, when I hire, of course, Christy's not technically an employee, but I do pay her when I need her. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, since my studio is brand new, we've just started breaking even, which is super exciting. Mm, that's um, so fast, yeah, though. You've been open like three months. I know. So I was fast. shocked. That's was amazing. Like, no? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, eventually I would love to be able to hire someone else. So being able to team, so I wouldn't be the only one running open poll. So I could flip flop. Maybe someone teaches morning classes and then does the morning open poll. And then I switch them out kind of thing. So then I'd have a little bit more freedom myself. For sure. That's yeah. Awesome. I always want someone here during open poll though, just in case anything happens or someone needs a spot. Yeah. If for yeah. safety, you have to have someone there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so probably maybe, pay for insurance too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for insurance. <laughs> yeah, all the paperwork stuff, the things that <laughs> everyone does sign their lives away to me. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I would rather just prevent any of that in the first place. So maybe someday I'll be able to hire someone or just someone to run open poll, and I only yeah. teach classes. Who knows? That'd we'll cool. see. I love that. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to learn what happens. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah. So what made you want to open a poll for you? Um, well, I always knew I liked teaching and I liked coaching. I knew that from a pretty young age. I got the opportunity to coach different teams through high school. So I got to coach uh, kids volleyball and I got to coach water aerobics and I really loved it. So I knew that was the industry I was going to go into. Um, and then I had a background in dance, but it was never a big focus because I had scholarships for college with sports and all that. And so dance got put on the back burner, but I accidentally became a stripper my freshman year <laughs> of college. I, I didn't intend to. I had no idea I was going to end up there. I didn't even know Montana had strip clubs. I grew up in a little farm town way up north. I, it just never occurred to me that Montana had a strip club, even one. Um, so I actually ended up becoming a stripper and I fell in love with pole dancing. It became, I always battled that. I was like choosing athletics or choosing dance. And I always had to choose whichever one was going to be a better career. So it was athletics. But when I found pole dance, it was the most perfect blend of both where I still got to study athletics and hold those foundations, but then I got the expression of dance and the storytelling and the creativity 
and it just, it clicked immediately. And I was like, I freaking love this. I'm addicted. Honestly, that's what's kept me stripping all these years is the money's okay here in Montana. We're not getting rich, but I love, love being on stage. I love dancing. And I started teaching uh, privately a couple years after starting, but I really sunk in and just like buried my nose into pole dancing, studied it as much as I could. I was breaking down the moves into muscle groups and translating it how, into the gym. How did you get contact with Charlie? Like, how did you start being the, the Billings pole teacher? I don't even remember. Charlie just brought you one day. Yeah, um, I did circus. And uh, oh. one of my girlfriends who dabbles in pole a little bit knew Charlie and she had called Elizabeth oh. to teach. And Elizabeth uh, isn't comfortable with teaching. She doesn't know that much about pole. So Elizabeth called me and sent me over to Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So that is how I started teaching at that other studio because I was still teaching privately then. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like once you started teaching at Limber Tree, people started knowing you as the pole person. <laughs> You were, you were like the pole, like she was like, because, because that was the space, right? Where it was yoga and silks and pole here and there and just stuff. And Cody was just start, like, she would come, you know, rock our worlds. And then she would start planting the seeds. Like we really need like a space for pole. And I feel like oh, people started so like gravitating to you. Yeah. Cody's like the pole cult leader. <laughs> we're like, Try. yes, let's do it. <laughs> I'm building an army here in Montana. For sure. Actually, I have one of my girlfriends that used to dance with me. Um, I'm helping her start up a studio in another town right now. She just started this week. Um, so yeah, we're, no, we're building, that. yeah, Laura is down in Bozeman and really? she, she had been wanting to for a long time. So we've been coordinating on that too. So we're building an army of pole dancers in Montana. We're going to get there. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I love it. <laughs> I mean, that is ultimately the goal to, um, because everybody, I feel like, especially in the U.S., there's such a stigma, which sucks because, I mean, stripping's awesome. I mean, I was it's a stripper. A <laughs> Someone's yeah. got to do it. Exotic dancing, all of it, for less, <laughs> like, it, um, but pole dancing, I feel like so many people, and especially in certain states, um they don't get it they don't understand it's fitness it's life changing it really helps with trauma at times and helps people accept themselves and love themselves oh my god i got goosebumps yeah <laughs> <laughs> everything that's so everything people don't understand how therapeutic it really is and how empowering but i love that right. y'all changing montana <laughs> yes Right. Are you the only pole studio in the area or what does it look like for the pole community out there? Is it far apart or? Um, on technicalities, <laughs> I am the only studio. The studio we used to work at still has a gal who's running their pole classes. Um, but so far we have not struggled with like competition wise. Um, the gal who teaches at the other studio, she's still new to pole herself. So I'm about it. I'm, yeah. We're just building a pole community. Billings I, is, out of all the cities in Montana, like Montana is pretty conservative, right? So going back yeah. to what um, Kiss was saying before, uh, Billings is like the most conservative town, it, built city in yeah, Montana. So bad. we deal so much with girls being interested in pole, but being so scared that, oh, are they going to think I'm a stripper now? And like, I kind of feel like, if people would just take the word stripper out of it in our area, at least, and just put, make it be dancer, make well, it be like, you know, performer. It's getting better. Is so it? there's two other studios in Montana currently. Um, there's one in Missoula. And then actually my older sister lives in Kalispell and she started going to, they just opened one in Kalispell. Cool. Um, so my older sister does pole too. She's never she's been in the strip club one time to watch me mm -hmm. um which scared the living life out of me i was like oh my god am i about to get disowned but my <laughs> sister absolutely fell in love with pole dance too and so she really enjoys it but she goes to a studio in kalispell so we're all pretty new i think the oldest one is the one in missoula um and hopefully soon with my friend alora there might be one in bozeman but yeah we're 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 scattered so there really isn't a lot of competition it's more like family at this point yeah so like I've gotten I've been in contact many times with the Kalispell studio because they they bounce with my sister um 
and we've talked about doing showcases together and like when I'm there, I help out when I can, when I'm up in Kalispell. Um, I would love to, they invited me to do a showcase piece one time, but unfortunately I wasn't able to make it up there for that. But yeah, it's not really competition at this point, I think because we're such a small community. I love that, it's still kind of close knit, which is awesome. We can help each other grow. Yes, tis the goal, tis the goal. <laughs> okay. uh, so speaking of showcases, I know you're a new studio. Do you plan on having one soon? Ooh, that's <laughs> I hate, I hate showcases. She's always trying to get us to do it. Um, I'm not competitive. It, it, I don't even know why. I, I mean, I'm clammy thinking about a showcase. <laughs> Just thinking about it, my hand, I'm like, I'm going to fall right off that pole. Oh. Um, not yet. I do, uh, I do have the girls do competitions or I encourage them to, uh, because we're so remote from anywhere. We do pole sport organizations, online competitions predominantly. So the girls get to come in and record them. Yes. I love pole sport organizations. They're so cute. I even have some of their medals in here from my competitions. Um, Eventually, as the community grows, I would love to do like a big, maybe uh, Miss or Mr. Pole Montana and have like do a big pole competition where I coordinate with all the other pole studios in Montana and do something fun like that. Um, but right now, the community is still pretty small. So I think we need to grow a little bit more before I put on something that big, but I do encourage the girls to start learning how to put together routines and feel confident showing them, especially with us. So when we record for those competition nights, I make a party out of it. So I'm like, please invite your friends to come watch. We all do our makeup together. The studio's open for them and we will record it and cheer each other on as many times as we need. Because mm -hmm. I myself perform like crap if it's just me and like two people, but you give me a crowd, I thrive on crowd energy. energy yeah. I love crowds. I lose all sense of like fear or anything. So we're slowly getting there. I think the onlines are really great for people who want to start competing or dancing publicly and showcasing what they've learned, but are still kind of not ready. So I really recommend pole sport organizations, online competitions, and they do a showcase category where it's not judged and it's not um, That's I what she's that always one. trying to get me to do. Yeah. She's like, dude, there's no, there's no yeah. <laughs> judgment. And I'm like, I don't know. I can't. That so. one is just purely a showcase where they're just like, they're really great about the pole community coming together. So if you don't want to compete, but you still want to show off a routine, they have that option too. Yeah. Um, That's beautiful that you're still um, participating in PSO. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even imagine there's... not being near, near one. Like that sucks. I know. Oh yeah, we're far from everything. If PSO, if you're listening to this, right? come on. <laughs> come here. Yeah. Too funny. We can make the drive to we Denver from to here. Denver. Yeah. yeah. We'll take turns yeah. driving. I know. Sometimes like even driving to Boston from here is like two hours and I'm like, fuck my life. <laughs> so I can't even imagine like how far you have to travel. Right. That's uh, I feel like we're pretty we're pretty used to it by now. I think because Montana's so spread apart that we we're just, just yeah we just do everything. Let's take a weekend to do it. We do it all the time. Yeah, bounce over to the hot <laughs> springs or yeah, we do pop over to Denver. We shouldn't tell them how much free time we have out here. That's one benefit. Ah! Is like everybody... <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> we have a lot of free time out here. <laughs> Good try. That is I one try. of the questions. Is it it's not? funny. As you much have free, free time. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's like this kind of free time where you're like on your phone doing work while you're <laughs> on so I don't know. I don't have any I don't remember the last time I took a vacation, yeah. but yeah, I do know a lot of my friends will they'll take the weekend off and it's no biggie to drive over to the hot springs or drive down to Denver. I definitely do not have that freedom yet, but someday, mm -hmm. <laughs> someday. <laughs> I'll, I'll say like the first year when we had our studio and I had a, a partner and, and she went away for like three months and I took over all of her classes. Don't do that. Oh my God. Three give months yourself so a vacation too. Yeah. Give yourself a vacation too. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's uh, hopefully, hopefully soon I'll be able to. Yeah. My goal is to stop working at the club, which has nothing to do with the club, but just like I would like more time to myself. But since it is currently my financial support, unrealistic, but sometimes I'll sneak a night off or like I took Christmas off and stuff. So we try, we try. I took New Year's off too, but I did a triathlon. Oh my God. I did an indoor triathlon on New Year's. So what a day off. Um, I had to work the night before and then got up in the morning for that. It was not a smart idea. I don't recommend it. I did not survive it. I told you not to. Because, like, sleep, dude. No sleep, no sleep. My poor boyfriend gets drug along for all of this, too. He's, like, my my momager. He's packed my bags, and I just have to I just have to roll out of bed and get in the car, and he takes me to all of my adventures. But that was my day off was an indoor triathlon, <laughs> which oh, I was so not prepared for. <laughs> I don't know. Someone used to tell me, do it now when we're young. <laughs> I was gonna say you should do it when you're young yeah <laughs> oh gosh I uh, yeah that was I I was so mad at my boss too I told him not to schedule me the night before and what did he do scheduled me the night before and I was oh, like no. bro do you know what to try out do you know what I have signed myself up for in the morning <laughs> I was my, like uh, my legs <laughs> my arms, my legs, my sleep. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh I'm in my 30s. So this is way past. I'm. I never could never do the the double shift. Just working out for 16 hours straight. I'm good. I will That's admit. Thing. I was like, wow, there was a time when I could, but not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. No. <laughs> you couldn't pay me any amount of money to do that. Like that was a no. lot. That was fun though. <laughs> Yeah, usually when I take a vacation, it's because I signed myself up for something like that. So I don't know if that counts as a vacation. (laughs) Right? I think, yeah, I think, yeah, planning the the rest is so hard, but it is really important. (laughs) It is. It is really hard. Um, Definitely, I need to focus more on that. That's part of my New Year's resolution, (laughs) too treat my body a little more like an athlete. I need to feed it, definitely feed it more because I do not eat enough for all of the crazy activities I put myself through. But then also having that like mentality where I'm like, I need to take care of this flesh bag I live in, which means taking rest days and not overworking myself. Right. It's so hard. Like you said, it's your your source of income. So you feel like super obligated to just like, push through um but yeah as we all know sometimes the body tells us <laughs> when it's time to stop <laughs> if we don't listen um and but, I probably will not be doing any big fancy pole moves at work tonight I'm like I'm cut off I love it oh my god floor work is my fave yeah I had to learn to love it. I did not like to put my feet on the ground, but as yeah, <laughs> my arms realized they couldn't hold up with the torture, I had to embrace floor work. <laughs> Same. Same. All righty. Oh my goodness. I feel like this has been more like a conversation. I don't know what questions we've asked, but we've definitely looked at a lot. I, mean, I think we should go through the, the tour. If that's okay. I was just about yeah. to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Okay, yeah. fair with I have a little microphone attached. I don't know if that helps for sound, but does that help? It. It did it work? Like, yeah, it did. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Do you want me to hold the laptop yeah. and we will try and find you? Okay. My microphone. So it's me <laughs> under this way. So we're a small studio, so I only have five poles. Um that big boy is the instructor's pole, obviously. That's only for me. <laughs> Wait, here, let's get closer. Wait, so it's not actually a, not a pole. pole. It's a beam. It's just a beam, but uh, <laughs> demos on it. It's my, it is my pole. It is the instructor's what, pole. What, what, I've never seen a pole like that before. You <laughs> yeah, it's just a support beam, but it, it's right in the middle of the room. That's really um, helpful, though. No. 
Yeah, this whole room is all mirrors except for this beautiful mural over here, which is actually painted by a friend of mine many years ago because she's friends with the owner of the building, painted this mural, and then we met in the gym like two years ago or maybe a year ago, somewhere in there. But just ironic that I happen to have my friend's art in my pole studio itself. That's beautiful. Yes. Uh, is it a specific um, scene then, that is um, out, like outside or is it uh, just a creation of a road and a mountains? It's beautiful. Oh, that's the land. It, that's the landscape in Montana. Pretty that's much. It. Anytime you ah. leave Billings, you have to see that to go anywhere. Yeah, so, that's, awesome. that's it's pretty accurate yeah. of a Montana landscape. I think she made that one up. I'm not sure. I'd have to ask Nicole, um, but she's an amazing artist. I have a little equipment over here in the corner. So in here, my students always have, there's a little bucket of clean rags and rubbing alcohol spray. And then I have a dirty wow. rag basket. So every time everyone comes in, they can grab their own rag. And when they're done with their class or their session, they just throw it in the dirty basket. And then I provide uh, crash mats, yoga blocks, resistance bands are my absolute religion. Yeah, I can't do wow. like... I can't go anywhere without resistance bands. They've got to be a must. So I have all of that and that is open to all of my clients, whether you're doing open pull or you're in class, you have unlimited access to all of that. Mm -hmm. I love yeah, that you that's also my... have them on a coat hanger. Yeah, like, that's brilliant. Like, oh so <laughs> I was just <laughs> thinking that, I was like, that is genius. <laughs> Yes, Since yeah. the room is all mirror, like mirrors, except for the mural, I didn't have a way to hang them, and I didn't want them just laying on the floor like a sad mess of snakes. <laughs> so I put them as on a on a little cheap coat hanger, and then um, I have my little work desk over here where I have pull grips. We can meander this way too. We're doing good. Yeah, look at us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm also a weirdo. I don't sit on chairs, so I literally just have a yoga ball yeah. that lives in this room. So mm -hmm. I train on it. I also sit on it. But yeah, this is where I keep everything where we've got stickers, pole grips. I keep my cleaners and I try to keep it looking cute. Those are fake plants um, yes. because we have no sunlight in here. No sunlight. Yeah, so I have fake plants instead of real ones. <laughs> um, and I can show you what the lobby looks like. So Tiffany owns what's called Vim Collective. So this out here is a shared space with a bunch of other businesses. So I get this really cute lobby and there's like coffee and tea around the corner and a bath and like bathrooms. Love and then that. all these other rooms are for rent, which is so cute. So we have this cute, it's yeah. ballroom, yoga, breath work all sorts of stuff in here and all sorts of other offices. So it's really nice to be able to connect with other business owners. So I know a lot of other fitness teachers, massage therapists. It's a nice little family in here. There's belly dancing too. So my room stays just mine, but the other ones are for rent by the hour. So we have a lot of assortment, which I think is really great for the community itself. Because, of course, a lot of my pole dancers really want to do belly dancing or ballroom or yoga. So they literally have it all in one building. Yeah. And yeah. then there's always something new going on, too. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Always. <laughs> always. It's kind of like a little team or family here. So yeah, I don't yeah. feel very alone. This room itself may be mine. But, yeah, I have tons of other business-minded people and teachers and fitness and dance enthusiasts just surrounding me. So... It's really nice that we get to share and chit chat and I love it. <laughs> yeah. And how, how tall are the ceilings in the pool room? <laughs> They're kind of short. Um, someday we would love to find a space with taller ceilings. But what are these like? Maybe like eight feet. If it, I think oh, maybe maybe a little taller. You think they're they're not seven, but they're not um, nine. <laughs> um, yeah, they're kind of short. Yeah, they're kind of short. <laughs> That's a, we were spoiled. The last year we were at, we had two really long or super tall poles oh in there. What, you think that was like twelve feet high? They were they were tall, and I love it. But in here, yeah, we have. Um, don't mind what I have done to this ceiling. Those open <laughs> spaces, the drop down oh. ceiling. Um, and I just moved the squares out of the way so I could put the poles yeah. to the ceiling. 
um, and then lazily forgot to put them back. <laughs> How tall are your guys' poles? Yeah. How tall I would leave them out too, just to like, you know, because we got to check them and stuff and moving them back and yeah. forth. I would be like, no, thank you. <laughs> just leave yeah. them off. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, a lot of studios do that. Um, it really makes it bigger and easier for it. Yeah. Yeah, someday we'd love to remove the drop down ceiling. Um, Tiffany and I discussed it. Uh, we do a lot of DIY, like Tiffany and I repainted the room and then her husband honestly did most of the floors for us because we were like, oh, my knees, my back, <laughs> help. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we've talked about taking down the drop down ceiling just to give a little bit more of a visual and like just those couple extra inches. But we were so excited to open. We were like, we'll worry about it next summer. Yeah. We'll, we'll, right? Like phase two, <laughs> yeah. phase three. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll take a week off and then we'll we'll try to be DIY queens and take it down ourselves. <laughs> right? So like, there's a couple, it, a couple extra inches under there, but. Yeah. yeah, it takes so long yeah. to find a space anyway. Like you just make it work no matter what has yeah. happened. Yeah, that's yeah. And most of my most of my students aren't uh, they're not too concerned about the height of the ceilings yet. They're right. perfectly content with being pretty low. Um, yeah. So, yeah, someday I'd love to expand to taller poles, but right now it's really not affecting anything. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm really the only one who complains about it because <laughs> I, I like to be up high. <laughs> uh, not me. I'm a ground dweller, so I prefer. <laughs> Really yeah, nice I like guy. I like the height too. <laughs> the low <Yeah>. flow. <laughs> low flow. I like to hang out at the top of the pole like a weird gargoyle, just staring down at people. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm like, how sexy can I be on the floor? Like, yes. How much can I dance on the floor? <laughs> are your poles um 45 millimeter or are, are they? a mix or what type of poles do you have? They're all 45 because that's like standard competition uh, size. And then I have them all chrome finish. I've thought about getting some different finishes. Two of the poles actually aren't mine. The stage poles are a friend of mine because I'm still a new business and only had so much money to start with. And I bought, I bought the three poles and now those are also 45 and stainless, but I've really thought about when I buy the permanent poles to go in, I've debated on, should I get some different finishes for other people or just not silicone? I oh, heard yeah, silicone no. tears your skin up. I have uh, my flying pole for my circus performances is silicone. And yeah, that thing will burn you. But I've heard people have like allergies and stuff to certain metal finishes. Oh, so I was, a good point. Yeah, yeah, I was the chrome allergy or yeah. And then I was worried of the silicone poles as well because I had never tried one. And then I, I visited um, Studio Chrome and they had one there. And I kind of liked them. And then Did some you? students were saying, yeah, because some students are really sweaty too. And they were like, oh, if you ever got a silicone pole, I would love that. So like it made me think about it. Oh, yeah. you didn't tear your skin up? Well, I mean, I, I kept my clothing on when I tried it, of course. Okay. okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I get, I get a little out. wild on mine, and I have burned the living crap out of myself, even with my clothes on, because I got it predominantly because it's a flying pole, so I wanted a little more security not to slip myself right off the right? bottom, but also for circus, um, I, I sometimes have different costumes and things, so that gave me more options for clothing wear, too. But yeah, definitely, I think silicone burns the crap out of your skin. Like, you don't need a waxer when you've got silicone. I have permanent bald spots on my body where, like, baby hair won't even grow anymore <laughs> because it's been burnt so, like, burnt off and rubbed off so many times by the silicone. <laughs> also, cleaning the silicones is a little more work. So I think I that's also about why. that, too. Yeah. Yeah, I use, um, I use uh, silicone adult toy cleaner on mine um that's a good idea yeah because it's literally it's like the same material so yeah. that's what I use on mine I have it's in my circus bag and it's so funny uh the first time I pulled it out in front of my circus troupe when we first got it they were like what is that and I was like oh I just got it from Adam and Eve <laughs> but it's it's cleaner 
<laughs> so yeah, it. I take it and like clean it with the rags. That's I think one of the bigger reasons I won't have silicone in my studio itself is just because cleaning it is a bit more of a hassle than just straight like rubbing alcohol on a rag. Um, but yeah, a different metal finish would definitely. Have you guys ever done powder coated poles? No, that's the one I haven't tried yet, though. Yeah. I have not. <laughs> I don't even know how you would clean that one. I've never used right, one or seen it. Because your skin cells would just get all. I know. That's what I'm afraid of, too. Like, it tears <laughs> and you don't know what's on there. How do you clean it and stuff? Oh, yeah. Well, I was like, I don't know if it's the same as like the powder coating spray you put on like one of my friends just got a new unicycle and he paints them with like a powder coated paint. And I was like, is that the same stuff that they put on the powder coated poles? I don't know. I've actually never heard of those until just now. Yeah. These are the wild. questions studio owners have. <laughs> we want to know. Yeah. We need to know. That's that you can pole clean your poles. <laughs> yeah, Expo needs to give me like samples of the different textures. <laughs> right, because right? yeah, we don't know what, um, how does everyone know what they're buying? <laughs> yeah. They just buy so them and try them off. It's so expensive. Yeah, one of my girlfriends has a brass pole. So I've been on brass and she's she's such a goofball. She does, uh, she's so scared to ruin the finish. So she uses like Brasso, like the brass polisher on it. But my question is, is how do we sanitize that? But I've, uh, my other friend, I've used brass. Our, our pole at work at the club is brass. So we've always just used rubbing alcohol on it and it's been fine. But she's such a goofball. She uses literal brass polisher on it. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, I've thought about grabbing some brass because I'm willing to clean them with rubbing alcohol. I've not seen too much of an issue with that and the finishes and like hurting it at all. But that's been something to consider for my next polls I buy is if I should get some different finishes on it, mm -hmm. mostly because of allergies. Since you're a new studio, do you offer just in-studio classes or do you offer online? Do you have workshops? How, I how was break into online that's been thrown at me for many years as a trainer to offering training online but unfortunately I am so behind the times like this is technically like I had an old dinosaur laptop for college that someone's grandma had gifted me and I barely knew how to use it and then I bought this one for business and I'm still learning um so I have not yet tech savvy enough I think to offer online properly, but when I do, I totally will. Um, Cause there's a lot of people, especially in Montana who are remote. Like I have tons of friends I grew up with in my small communities and they're buying poles and things like that. And they're like, I want to learn, but obviously we don't even have a grocery store near us. Like there's a small one with maybe three, four aisles now. Uh, so access to anything is like impossible. So I would love to, eventually offer that especially for remote people but yeah currently I'm still learning how to make TikToks <laughs> so bear with me someday so yeah currently I only offer in-person classes I love it I mean one day at a time it's definitely a learning process every day I think I accidentally un oh okay again what? don't worry you're back again <laughs> but I was going to mention too um, in the future if you did offer it would be cool because you have the shorter poles which most people do at home so it would be just perfect for everyone yeah. at, at home yeah because I know, I know so for me it's hard to like modify classes for people at home we have to like tell them to like shimmy down <laughs> and do it again <laughs> stay yeah. low when I talk from my home studio privately, I can stand barefoot and lay my hand flat on my ceiling. And then my living room was really small. So it wasn't a living room. It was my pole studio. I didn't have a TV or anything in there. I had a pole in the middle of the room and like some dumbbells and stuff. Uh, so I'm pretty used to teaching in that confined space. 
I do love more room, but yeah, I'm pretty well versed with that, with figuring out what you can and can't do in a small space and try not to, you know, kick the cat tree or kick a couch. Yeah, there's so many ways to get around it. Definitely work with what you have. Um, I had the same issue. My pole from home wasn't high, but I mean, you can still do a circus climb, slide your slide yourself down and do it and it's still conditioning there's so many ways yeah i mostly used my pull at home for my own conditioning because of those limits but especially for beginners or someone just looking to keep it low it works perfectly Back. yeah oh. definitely oh. Any pole tumbling on a short pole but it's <laughs> <laughs> slow motion <laughs> I love it. So what what type of classes do you offer? Do you um have like dance type of classes? Um I know you mentioned the conditioning one. Yes, so I have my classes broken into two categories. I have my fitness classes and then I have my dance classes. Um right now since I'm still a one woman show, I only offer one from each category. So I have my conditioning class where we focus on strength training predominantly with pole in mind. So all of my exercises are based off of um, muscle building, strength building. So I convert it a lot and explain it like with the bands we do like flat arm pull downs and all sorts of things. And I teach the girls as we go, I was like, hey, you can also do this on a cable machine in the gym or all this. And then we also do a lot of exercises itself on the pole modified with like pole in mind. So that is what the conditioning classes are like. So I'm not gonna make you sprint. We're not focusing on a high heart rate. We're focusing on building those muscles. Um, and then I do what I call combos class where I pick normally, and I do those by level. So right now we only have level one until I get my level twoers back up to, they've been re repracticing their skills since the studio opened, but yeah, I picked two to three different poses themselves. And then we break it down and learn each of them. And then we put them together and learn how to transition between them. And I leave that a little bit like a free for all. So if one move's got you stumped and you want to sit and maul on that move for the rest of class, that's fine. Um, if you're just eating it up and want to just go to town on that combo and perform it, please do. But yeah, that's normally how combos go. So over time, you get to learn different moves and add them to your repertoire. So sometimes you might be introduced to a new one or other days it might be moves you already know, but in a combination, you didn't think to put them. I love that. So you can like choose your own adventure. Yes. And <laughs> like yeah. those. Um, I sell these little booklets that I get off of Amazon and they're the pole dance wow catalogs. They don't have every move humanly possible, but they have a pretty good array. So as my students learn moves, they can mark it off in their books. So then like we'll play games like random number generator where we'll let the computer pick numbers and then we'll pull those moves and force it to happen because sometimes they do not blend well. Um, but we do fun stuff like that too. So combos is pretty much just, yeah, making combinations. Or when we get there, I like to do like freestyle. And I think that's a lot of part where people choke up because that's when you start to like see yourself in the mirror and, you know, why do you not look like that? So that is kind of, I don't, I, I know like her, her classes, if I need her to fill, if I fill in for her, but like when it comes to like just moving on the pole, that's kind of something that really appeals to me. Like just move to feel good and maybe even don't look at yourself in the mirror. I would like to add those in because there's some classes both of us used to teach at our old studio that we currently don't teach. I used to teach mobility and flexibility classes um, where the goal was teaching us the different styles of stretching and how to do it and different exercises to work towards those goals because flexibility and pull really do go together. Um, and then Christy used to teach a lot of her, I would say more dance styled where there's yeah. pull games, there's more expression. It's less about the rigidity and form and muscle work and more about the expression and letting loose and getting comfortable to move in your body. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I would love to add those in again, because I'm really rigid and I'm like, here's the pose, let's do it. Um, and Christy's like, we're flowing and yeah. we're feeling. And I think that's a great combination to have. So hopefully in the future, when I'm not so tired and constrained on time, those classes will get added into the schedule again. And there's more people come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Nice. Holy awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so awesome right now I was going to mention like don't add any more to your schedule <laughs> <laughs> that's the yeah. old old lady in me calling <laughs> I know hopefully hopefully it'll be a gradual process like get rid of <laughs> one day of one thing and add that to like your studio time that'd be awesome yeah, yeah that probably adding classes probably won't happen until I'm financially able to just work the right. studio itself. So then that can be um because I love a good schedule and I'd love to right now I only offer evening classes too, and I just have those two class blocks every evening. And then I teach the privates throughout the day per appointment. But I would love to be able to add morning classes too for those people who can't do evenings. Um, and then, yeah, having the, the array of other things, but that'll come when my schedule allows it. Cause right now I am on a stripper schedule and we're on a night schedule. So I, this earliest, the studio is open is noon. And then I usually close around eight thirty nine every night. Uh, so unfortunately I do not have the ability because my poor dog, I got to be able to go to the gym. My dog needs her. She's a cattle dog. So she needs activities and exhaustion. So that's usually what my mornings are spent doing is trying to exhaust that dang dog. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I love it. I love it. She and I, I actually, uh, I take her, we go at least three miles every day. Um, but I'm slowly introducing her to jogging and then I will eventually, I have a weight vest that I wear um, when we go for our walks so that I can make it a little more intense for me, but eventually I'll introduce her to jogging. So hopefully that'll cut down our outdoor time just a little bit closer. And maybe someday I'll be able to take her to the studio if we ever end up in a new location. So that would definitely open me up more room to add more to the schedule. Cause then I can entertain my dog. She can be at the studio entertained and we won't have to worry about that. Those like three hours of pure play that I sneak in exercise for me, play for her. It's a win-win combo, but yeah, that's, it's going to be a while before I have room to add. <laughs> for sure. Can you, can you give any studio owners that are like just starting out any advice or anything you've learned from being open since October? <laughs> yeah, in my short time, organization is key. And yeah, breaking down your schedule. The legal stuff is really intimidating. Uh, Tiffany's been a great help with that because I definitely don't have a business mind. Um, but I had my whole business like model pretty much laid out. I knew how I was going to charge. Um, I had my website built and all that. I knew what packages I was going to offer. I had all of that already decided. Little things here and there we've changed. Like when I first opened, I had the same class at every time the same day. I have a six and a seven o'clock class, but I found there are people who can only make seven o'clock and they wanted to take both styles of classes. So now I flip-flop them every day. So conditioning will be at six o'clock on Sunday and combos after, and then on Monday they flip. Um, stuff like that I've left open because I like to hear everyone's input. I'm really, really open to that. So that stuff's great because obviously my studio is for my clients. So there are things I leave flexible so that I can learn what works best for them. But things like how many hours a day I work is scheduled out precisely. And I had that worked out in advance so that I didn't overwork myself per se. Um, and things like my business model, everything. Have it all organized. It will make your life so much easier. I even have my lesson plans typed out, which she doesn't need those. But just in case somebody did, good. I have them. And I don't have to worry about that later. 
Um, so yeah, organization is key. Have as much of it figured out before you open because that made it a lot easier for me. Such good advice Thank you for sure. For sure. Awesome. I'm sorry, I talk so much if y'all haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> no, no, this is really good. <laughs> Because yeah. it hopefully inspires some other people who are thinking about opening a studio. Because you're right, all of the business stuff is really, really intimidating, especially if you're just, you know, like <laughs> no business training at all. Um, but it's yeah. possible. Working yeah. small, just one day open the studio. I've been teaching pole for years and I did it in my living room. I converted my living room into a pole studio, which was definitely under the table. I did not pay taxes on that. <laughs> um, but uh, slowly I built up my clientele. So I already had a set amount of people who I knew would tr follow me when I opened my business. So that took a lot of that uncertainty out. And I was really lucky getting to have that opportunity and have that connection with the community. I know a lot of people don't have that. Like my friend, Alora is starting blank. Um, so yeah, so I already had, that helped with my numbers too, with knowing what I could afford in a space, a lot of my costs and all of that. Cause I didn't take out a loan or anything and I didn't have much for savings, still don't. So like I'm slowly buying things as I piece together, but I had that reassurance that I knew I would have at least this much income every month from the people who I could guarantee were coming with me. So that was something that made it easier for me that may not be available to everyone else already having that built up clientele. Right, it's like, okay, everyone wants me to do this thing. I'm gonna do the math. <laughs> <laughs> seems like I could do this thing and then you just do it <laughs> yeah so I spent amazing. building up that community of, wow. of teaching pole and having people come to our other studio and our other studio is pretty pricey to be honest like oh yeah 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 you had to have something too that's affordable when mm -hmm. it's like that new I feel like where yeah. people are not gonna want to spend a car payment on uh, something they don't even know that they're going to be good at and yeah. then they do their first couple of classes and probably you're not good at it at the very beginning anyway so uh, I luckily I had a group of people who were determined to keep doing pull out of the price so I already knew opening my own studio uh, I got lucky and I'm able to charge less so I already mm -hmm. knew that the people who fight and grind to come to those classes were going to come with me so they were a guarantee mm -hmm. um, yeah. so that a bit easier and less scary for sure I definitely uh -huh. have enough clients to you know I'm not getting rich over here I still have to work another job no, but, yeah, it's still <laughs> it's like, it's just, it's still but that took a lot of the fear to help me take the leap it took a lot of the fear out thank you so much for sharing that and I, I, it makes me feel a little bit better too because I also didn't have any loans or anything. We just went in all willy nilly and like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, really, but, yeah. but yeah, you just keep doing what you love and and people keep coming and yeah, and now here we are. <laughs> mm -hmm. A big sector of education too, having an education behind you. Uh, Christy is certified for pole, and then I have yeah my college education and all that behind me. I, and that's continuous, very continuous. I am like personal trainer, satisfied or certified through NASM and things like that. We both have like multiple fitness certifications mm -hmm. and yeah, that's very helpful because it all kind of intertwines, you know, and it's that, just another modality of fitness. That is like something so. people care about too. Like if you're in an area where there's a lot of competition, um, having an education, I think helps set you on another standard. So looking out for that, there's a lot of certification programs and things like that. And I don't want anyone thinking they have to be directly pole certified because on technicalities, I don't have a pole certification. I am open to that. And that is something I'd like to provide for myself and future employees is a continuous access to education. But I think that's super important because that myself has made me a better teacher, more quality being knowledgeable because my my training from athletic training and from coaching and from being an athlete myself has translated I think to making me a better and more knowledgeable coach 
So I wouldn't discredit that. I would encourage looking into education first and a continued education because that's going to put what you offer people at a higher quality. I love that. Yes, thank you for sharing. I agree with you, especially depending on where you are, like certifications and things like that matter. Those that you took that extra step. And that's what people look for, especially in where there's a lot of studios or if there's multiple. I know that's something I look for is someone's background. I want to see what they know. Are they, is this somebody I can trust to teach me? They may not think about it that same way, but yeah, having that education behind you, I think makes a difference for you to stand out yourself. So yeah, don't discredit that. Don't feel discouraged if you don't. There's lots of options to get educated, but I encourage it. It makes you yourself a better teacher and a better instructor. Right, all of the things that you wouldn't really think about, um, like the safety stuff, and, you know, like all of the yeah. other stuff. Because a lot of us are just like, I want to teach. <laughs> yeah. And you can be trained in everything, but. Yeah, yeah, the certifications are good. Too, like, I feel like um, in the aerial arts spotting, you definitely, yeah. it definitely helps. Cause <laughs> well, in our community, we have a lot of people who offer to teach things that they're not qualified to teach. Um, and we have a lot of injury rates and things like that. I've heard tons of horror stories. I know tons of people who do not want to do pole because they've had bad experiences with other instructors, people from friends, from people I know who want to come teach and want to because they think it sounds fun and they love it, but all of them get stumped when I'm like, that's awesome. You're welcome to come shadow. I'll introduce you to some programs you can look into. And all of them are like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> um, there's more to teaching than just loving pole itself. And there's a lot of that in our community. I've been offered jobs for positions that I'm not qualified for. Like I was offered to teach uh, hammock yoga, aerial yoga. First of all, I know nothing about yoga. I Just because I've taken yoga classes before does not mean I'm, I'm certified or I'm qualified to teach. And so I've turned down plenty of those positions where it's at other studios too, where I've been offered to teach things. And I've done silks here and there but I'll never teach it because I honestly tie myself in a knot every single time and almost die. So just because I'm athletic and I've had experience with it doesn't mean I should be teaching anybody. So people notice that people really do. I've had a lot of people coming to me after experiences like that. Be like, wow, I can be in control of this move. I'm not going to. Um, and I think part of that comes from being in Billings, Montana, where we're starting something like, like there's not, like she was saying, like a high competition rate of pole studios with all these certifications. So this studio is going to be the studio with all the certifications and all the right education and the background. And that's, I run into that everywhere in the fitness as, industry. As we grow, we're supposed to be like the next Denver. So by the time we're the next Denver, <laughs> are we? <laughs> yeah, that's what they're projecting for Billings, at least. Billings is going to be Denver in like, I don't know, 50 years. We'll be old. We'll be old. Yeah. <laughs> but it's high. Yeah. That's fitness industry. There's so many people pushing like influencers and things like that, pushing things without having the knowledge. I ran into that as a trainer a lot, personal training. I wanted to strangle people where like they'd be like yeah I can train but they have they have no idea how to help somebody else's body it's a completely what works for me may not work for Christy and vice versa and I need to have the education to know how to help her and understand her body and keep it safe um so there's yeah I am super big about before you even think about opening a business get some education behind you really step up the quality of what you can offer Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. Helps prevent injuries and so much more. Yeah. I think it's funny too, you bring that up because it is funny how some people will be like, oh, they do pole. Um, let's have them teach Lyra. And like, <laughs> I saw them on a Lyra once. <laughs> <laughs> I love 
Lyra. Yeah, I love Lyra. I have not almost murdered myself on a Lyra because those dang silks get me tied in a knot. At least a Lyra, I can escape from it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I've been asked that too plenty with the pole studio because they want, they're like, oh, is there, is there silks? Is there Lyra? Is there anything else? And I'm like, unfortunately, no, we're just straight pole because that is what I am qualified to teach. Maybe someday I would love to expand and have more than that, but I would need somebody qualified and I am not. So we're and passionate about it, like yeah. passionate about getting that qualification and that certification. Yeah. I'm like not at all interested in any other aerial art personally, other than pole, like pole, pole for life. And I love my circus troop gets asked that a lot because a lot of the artists, most of us are self-taught. There's a few of us who come from uh, like circus schools or education like that. And we don't offer to teach. It's called Alterna Circ, um, but we get asked all the time to teach and people want to come in and we have to turn them down all the time because we're not, we're not teachers, we're performers. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of us are self-taught too. So that does not make us qualified to teach. And that's something we've all unanimously agreed on is that, yeah, we're not a circus school. We are a mod podge of mostly self-taught artists. So we don't offer those services, unfortunately. That's so responsible. <laughs> and it goes to show you like the, how like most of the, you know, the general population who's not in circus arts, they don't really understand um, what it is to go through all of the training or like, and all of that. They're just like, I want this cool, fun thing. <laughs> you can show me. I would love to offer that because I definitely, especially for adults, like I don't offer kids classes currently, but I would love to, but the stigma is why I don't. Um, Cause I'm sure that's a lot of people do not want their kids on a pole, but I found like my, uh, my friends as kids whose parents dance or do any of those love it. And it's like being on a big jungle gym and expression and athleticism and it's keeping their kids active and healthy. But there's lots of activities for kids around here, but there's not a lot for adults. Um, so that's part of the reason I would maybe someday be open to expanding to more because I don't think there is enough activities for adults that's active and pro-healthy, but I want it done right. So like alternative fitness, like not yeah. everybody likes to go to the gym like we do. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, not everybody is about <laughs> moving weights around. Yeah, I love it. This is my favorite time of year too, because there's so many people in there. There's I've already so made, many people. I've, I've got, I, <laughs> a mug, gave some mug eyes to some old, old guys yesterday and hogged the deadlift pit and had to remind, I was in a group chat with a lot of my girlfriends and I was like, just a reminder guys, I'm in here here in my cute little crop top, makeup done, moving my light weights and I'm gonna hog this. There was like tons of men lurking, looking for that spot. And I was like, nope, yeah. it's mine. I'm gonna hog it. I did multiple, but then things like, I met so many, I've made so many new friends. These last like few days at the gym, I always try to talk to everybody too. Because girl gang, first off, we got to start a girl gang. Yeah, so. like making that comfortable space where you don't have to be afraid of the lurking old men. Yeah, like. so the gym is a scary place. I'm actively working on making it not a scary place for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, no, that's not not everyone's favorite environment as much as I try to make it. So, so having, yeah, there just really isn't enough for us out here. There's just not a lot of activities available Oh, that's, we're here. <laughs> Thank you for providing the activities to your area <laughs> and for educating I them too. I definitely hope that changes in time. That'd be awesome. Mm. <laughs> yes. Well, you'll be training your army of whole dance. <laughs> yes. Do you guys have any other questions for us? Um, I think we answered everything. You talked a little bit about what's to come for the future. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything else in the very near future? Any workshops or anything like that coming soon? Uh, I'm doing, uh, which I need to post oh, about, yeah. bring, a, bring a buddy night. Um, so all of my members, which I'll have them, they, they sign up in advance so that I know about how many, but it's a bring a buddy night. So you get to bring a friend for free. They still have to sign the waivers and all that, but they get to try out poll for free. And my members get to teach their friend poll. So 
I'll supervise what they're teaching them, of course, but kind of kind of a fun. I know there's some partners, some boyfriends who uh, don't believe how hard pole is and need to be humbled with a thigh sit. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's normally the humbler. Um, but yeah, yeah, we're gonna be buddy night in February. So somebody gets to try pole for free and they get to be introduced to it by their friend. That's awesome. I can't wait to see how that um, turns out for you. I started following you. <laughs> You're studio. Oh yeah, we'll have to follow each other. Send me their page. Yes, follow I okay. follow them, but yeah, I'll okay. send it to you. But yeah, that's, that's I think the only thing we have upcoming right now. That's awesome. Wow. That's a really cute idea. Yeah. <laughs> Buddy. Yes. It's a win-win. Oh, they get to have fun and I get to possibly sneak some new members in. <laughs> <laughs> into the poll army. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Networking. Um, we'll provide all those links in the comments for the YouTube video and for the podcast. Your website link, your Instagram. Do you have a TikTok? I know TikTok's a big thing. <laughs> I think you said you were learning that now. Yeah, my, I can send you my TikTok should be the same as my Instagram. I'm really bad about updating my Instagram, to be honest. <laughs> it's a lot. Chris tried to convince me to go on TikTok and I have one, but I have abandoned it. <laughs> I always hit TikTok and then take the same video and put it on Instagram and Facebook. It's all TikTok now for me. I'm like, that's it. Fun. I got that much time. Uh. <laughs> but I'm forgetful I'm really forgetful we need I need to hire you as a social media oh manager it's all video? about it's all that. about recycling use the same thing for Instagram TikTok and YouTube shorts <laughs> keep it simple <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh well this was so much fun uh Chris do you have any more questions I think they answered I'm, all of mine I'm, just so excited to you know meet you guys and be part of the journey my question I guess is how long did it take you guys to really feel like you were on the ground because I I'm sure in the beginning you felt when you were with the x pole stage and the three poles like we sit down and we're like dude what the f are we doing right now <laughs> what we're doing <laughs> you, I guess oh. I mean our story is a little different because we started before COVID and then like we had like we were we were popping and then COVID hit, and then I was like, what the hell? Um, and now I don't have anything to base it on. So I like now we're like, we're popping again. So like, okay. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully this will so maybe now is when I feel <laughs> okay. Yeah. So like five years. Every someone told me the first year's the hardest. The third, the first three years determine if you're gonna stay in business. And then after five years, it's like the empire or like the girl <laughs> game. You know? Yeah. So that's kind of what we're thinking. We're hoping anyway. Yes. I love how you said empire. That's how I kind of want to feel right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, it is, it is long, but I mean, if you're, if you've broken even already, that's amazing. Like that is so amazing. I, I wish, think it took I, us like a year to do that. That's oh, what wow. I was expecting. Yeah. Was, but, um, but yeah, breaking even to my monthly expenses, I was like, dang I mean I got a sweet deal here Tiffany takes really good care of me um like she didn't make me pay for any demo costs I happen to already I paint on the side as a hobby so I already had enough paint to cover this place and then uh she went out and got the flooring DIY yeah. saves lives like there's a YouTube on it like learn how to do it yourself yeah. so like <laughs> Tiffany was great so we didn't have uh, like barely any demo costs to get the space ready and then things like she just she's so straight up and honest too so like it was really easy for us to figure out I'm only on a year lease because she's she's a boss babe and she was like I get it it's hard because all the other places I was looking at wanted like five to ten year leases and I was like oh my I don't know if I can commit to that like I don't know this is a pole dance studio in a conservative like community I wasn't fully sure if we're gonna make it so Tiffany was really great because I talked to her about my fears with that too she's been with me through that whole journey and she was like I got you let's do a let's do a year and feel it out 
and then see where it takes us after that. And I was like, where would I be without you? Um, <laughs> so I, yeah, it's been a wild journey and I've been really lucky so far. Yes. I love that you, you talk about all the people that believe in you too. Cause like, I know for me, like I'll believe in myself every so often, but then like on those days when I don't believe in myself, I feel like there's always somebody that comes in they're like, wait a second, you're still on the right track. It's so that just, community. Yeah. <laughs> in the pole industry and not that other places didn't have it but we just have it so strong here like you walk into this space and you're like this is a pole studio let's get it you know yeah. it's great to have people like Christy and I met when we taught we didn't know each other we met at that last studio and instantly we were like okay it's team so Pulse like team. Yeah. we taught our own classes but we ended up going over like what each other teach and blending it and like making sure our classes were really cohesive and making sure we offered a really rounded like education for people so it, we didn't have to, by no means was that required of us, but it was instantly like, okay, what do you teach? What do I teach? How do we, how do we make sure our students are getting everything from us? And then, uh, yeah, that community just grew and meeting other business owners and other, like, I would not be able to do it without everybody who helps me out. And like, there's no actual benefit for anyone else other than just love and support, but yeah, every person who supports me every day. It's not just me. I'm, I need it. <laughs> I need all the support I can get. <laughs> right, you're really... I'm excited to see what happens in the future for y'all. That's awesome. Yes. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for sharing all this with us too. Like it, it yeah. takes a lot of courage to like talk about all of the things. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. Thank you for interviewing us. This was so awesome. Thank you. I'm absolutely, I've been so excited about this. All We've been so. talking about it all week. We're like, okay. <laughs> she's like texting me last night. She's like tomorrow. And then today she's like, I'm heading to the studio. I'm like, me too. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was truly beautiful. Thank you for all you do in the whole community and spreading awareness out there. Oh my God, it's true. Yeah. It's, it's, it's truly cool. the only way. Um, we fight the stigma if we talk about it and we make it a thing in those places where it's not a thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I love it. That's, oh, I've been, like so I know a lot of other, like my students will be stalking your channel very yeah. soon you also. Just, you just gained a gang of followers, just so <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, Thank so you. And let us know if you each, because um, we do poll dancer interviews like separately too. So if you just want to share your personal story, favorite tricks, things like that, we're yeah. always down for a good time. <laughs> Need to grow, whatever. Yeah. If you guys ever want the story of how I accidentally became a stripper, um, <laughs> a fun, that would be a fun song. That. Oh, yeah. That uh, is, it was definitely. Yeah not intentional <laughs> i did not know what a, what was happening to me happened? Oh, I, oh my god that is too funny <laughs> yeah we'll definitely have to have a part two where we learn the backstory of that yeah. <laughs> i'm sure i'm not the only one that's happened to i'm sure i'm oh, sure totally it's yeah. definitely yeah that's definitely happened before. like i went from finding out that montana had strip clubs to within the next 15 minutes somehow accidentally ending up in one and not knowing i was in one it was wild. <laughs> i was like what is happening to me it's like the whole the came to you it was like this is your this is your calling in life the Embrace poll it. the poll was calling me i was like what is happening here mm -hmm. completely yeah. I still work with the same, like the guy who first, uh, our manager, our secondary manager was the first one, like when I was in the club and I had no idea, I was like, where am I? What is happening? And my roommate was like, yeah. And uh, our manager was literally like, um, he came in, looked at us and literally went, are you guys here to audition? And before any of us could speak, we were, we were sucked in. Love it. And Flake still thinks that's the funniest thing in the world. He still thinks it's hilarious. Um, I was so clueless the whole time, but I was like, what? We're doing what? <laughs> and now look at you now, own studio. <laughs> right? yeah. Flake tells the story really good, but he's such a good storyteller. 
I am, I'm not great at it, but yeah, I'm always game for more collabs. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And maybe one day we can come and visit in, in person too and experience the studio. Uh, yeah, yeah. That is the for sure. <laughs> Welcome. And we'll come visit your studio. Oh my God, let's be studio friends. Yeah. <laughs> I need a We're vacation. Off. And we'll take a vacation. We'll come see you guys. I need a vacation yes. to go do more. Oh, I love that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. I'm all like, don't do that. But like, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, thank you again so much for. for sharing your story and your studio and everything about it um i guess we should sign out okay thank you so much okay thank you so yeah. much my my name is mandy mack and i am chris rivers and we are signing out it was real wait, wait, wait. studio hey. filling montana oh my yeah yes oh, i love it <laughs> i love it <laughs> Ooh, so flexible. <laughs>